All right, so welcome back to the channel, y'all. For those of you who want to know what's going on with Diddy, here's an update. Today is the 19th of November, 2024. And as of today, I'm sure you've probably heard that there was an emergency hearing that was called in the P. Diddy case. Now, a lot of people are thinking, oh, damn, Diddy about to get out. He about to get bail. Is this an emergency bail hearing? Well, let's break down to you what it really is. Not sugarcoating nothing, just getting straight to the details. So, P. Diddy is now requesting to appear unshackled in the courtroom. And that request has been granted by a judge over jury prejudice concerns. That's self-explanatory. His attorneys are basically saying, can he show up to court without being handcuffed and shackled, man? He is not Hannibal Lecter. He is not the kind of person who is so dangerous. You put him in a room of people, he's going to like bite ears off and gouge eyes out. And if you keep parading him around every time he has an appearance to before a judge or in a courtroom and his legs are shackled to his hands and whatnot, this could play a role in the mind of the jury members or those who are potential jurors since they haven't started choosing juror members or potential jurors yet. So the public is watching this. People are seeing it and it could mean something bad for him, you know. Now, Judge Arun Subramanian granted Sean P. Diddycombe's request to appear unshackled in the courtroom as he continues to battle these serious charges that Diddy is looking at. Now, Sean P. Diddycombe's, his attorney, Mark Agnafilio, he filed a motion, and that motion was filed late November 18th after requesting an emergency hearing for November 19th. Today is November 19th. So right away I answered your question. For the people who are wondering, what's this about? Why are they in court? What, what's the emergency hearing about? There's a lot of rumors going on out there. Did he got in a fight behind bars? He got hurt. He's in danger. His cell got raided. This, that, and the other. New charges are being brought against him. He is running the jail. He is doing stuff to obstruct justice from behind bars. All these things are being said. So let's get into what's actually really happening. His attorney, Mark Agnafilio, actually filed a motion yesterday, which is November 18th, after requesting an emergency hearing for November 19th, which is today, which is why they are in court at the emergency hearing today, because it was granted. Now, this judge seems to be in Diddy's favor. I don't know, because the other judges before, or judges before, this is the third judge to his case, they pretty much just said, nope, no bail for you, stay where you're at, we don't want to hear anything, bye. This new judge already granted two motions. One, emergency hearing, granted. Can he appear without handcuffs and shackles? Granted, right? The lawyer pointed out that Diddy previously appeared in leg shackles for a October 10th proceeding. And the lawyer said it was noticed by the press and by the public that he was shackled and handcuffed. And he expressed concerns that these shackles and handcuffs will prejudice a potential jury pool. Diddy's attorney further said, cited some case laws as precedents including from a judicial opinion given during United States versus Haynes, which noted that a defendant may not be tried in shackles unless the trial judge finds on the record that it is necessary to use such a restraint as a last resort to satisfy a compelling interest as preserving the safety of persons in the courtroom. So you got to have a lawyer who is smart enough to go dig up some case files to put it before the judge to say, Your Honor, look at this. United States versus Haynes. This is where precedence was set. So why can't that be extended to my client? 
My client is not a danger to people like they're trying to make him seem. And if they make him seem that way, then it could prejudice the outcome of a fair trial for him. Based on that, the judge said, you know what? You are absolutely right, sir. Diddy's attorney further conceded that the court didn't extend this rule to additional proceedings outside of hearings, but Mark argued that given the press attention on the pretrial proceedings in this case, in this case, there is a substantial risk that potential jurors will learn about the shackles through the media, and then they will develop a bias. As jurors for this trial have not yet been formally selected or sequestered. But check it. We're all watching it. Everybody is paying attention to what's going on with Diddy. So where are they going to actually find potential jurors who have not seen or heard or knows nothing that's going on with him, especially when pictures are starting to hit the airwaves, the internet, rather. Uh, he's in the public eye. And what they see can actually say something. Now, let's talk about vloggers, bloggers, whatever you want to call them on social media, especially YouTube, when we make these videos of Diddy behind bars and the videos of, and you do a thumbnail of Diddy and shackles and chains and, you know, those kind of things. Those could be deemed as prejudicial too or as tools that can work against him. Because you know a lot of people today, they don't even pay attention to videos like these that actually give you updated information straight from the courtroom uh, as what is going on. They actually just watch different vlog, blog videos, and they believe that most of these thumbnails are real. And they're not. So in addition to the case law, Diddy's attorney argued that shackling could undermine the presumption of innocence and interfere with Diddy's ability to communicate effectively with his legal team during these proceedings. Moreover, he flagged concerns that forcible shackling could violate the respectful treatment of defendants, which would be a constitutional violation. The judge granted the request. And what this means now? is that moving forward from today, November 19th, Diddy will now appear in courtrooms without shackles. His next appearance is set for today at 3 p.m. Today meaning November 19th at 3 p.m. By the time you hear this, it'll be past that time. Now, that's 3 p.m. Eastern time as he requested to appear before the court for what is called a quote-unquote emergent hearing. You can go Google and look up in the law what an emergent hearing is. Diddy's attorney, Agnophilio, he flagged concerns over materials that were allegedly taken from Diddy's cell in a recent raid. In a letter to the judge, the attorney said that the prosecutor and the U.S. Attorney's Office were now in possession of what is known as attorney-client privileged materials pertaining to this case, including the defendant's own written notes, which are concerning defense witnesses and defense strategies. You and your attorneys, you get to meet, you get to plan out your next step, how are you going to fight these charges, what are we going to do next. Attorney-client privilege is kind of like doctor-client privilege. A doctor can't just come out and tell you everything that's going on with your mama or everything that's going on with anybody else, their health records. Oh, you know that James has AIDS. Yeah, he tested HIV positive, and I have him on two different medications. And they can't just tell you people's uh, private information. So doctor-client privilege or doctor-patient privilege 
pretty much the same as attorney client privilege. So raiding his cell for whatever the reason is and confiscating all these things could bring about a huge problem. So with that being done, his attorneys are like, yo, we need to get back to court, like immediately get before a judge. Because what it looks like is they're trying to sabotage Diddy's ability to fight his charges, even with the limited amount of ability he has. It's not like he's out on bail, right? And he can meet with his attorneys 24-7 at his own will, and they can plan out a strategy and do some things. He is literally incarcerated. So visits, limited. Interaction with his attorney, limited. Everything is limited for him. So he's got to grab pen and paper, take notes, so he remembers what his attorney said. You know how your, your attorney is able to prep you? Like, okay, we have a hearing coming up, and you're going to take the stand, and you're going to go through some questioning, and this these are the questions they're going to be asking you. So they will prep you for that. Diddy isn't able to do any of that in a good way. He is just able to take notes down pen and paper and rehearse himself and all that. So he's already, like, limited. And now that they've taken away these attorney-client privilege notes, this is super concerning for the defense team. And they've called this, well, they requested this emergent meeting, and the judge granted it. So they're back in court again today. November 19th of 2024, the claim came after the feds allegedly made contact. This is what the feds are saying. They're saying that Diddy allegedly made contact with witnesses. The previous video we did explained that they believe that he was buying people's commissary, putting money on their books, had the whole place under control using other people's phone privileges, phone accounts to reach out to people he's not supposed to be reaching out to, all this other stuff. In a previous legal filing, prosecutors actually admitted that BOP investigators recovered the following notes from Diddy's cell during a pre-planned nationwide sweep of BOP facilities. So what they're trying to say is we weren't targeting him. This was a pre-planned sweep of all BOP facilities nationwide. He just so happens to be in a BOP facility, and we swept his cell among with many others, but what we found in his cell tells us that he's doing these things behind bars. I don't know about y'all. I'm not buying that. But anyhow... But now they claim that no privileged material was actually taken from his cell. His attorneys are saying that's not true because this is where he has these paperwork. And now they're missing. They additionally emphasize that the sweep was pre-planned. So they're trying hard to pretty much say our sweep had nothing to do with Diddy. We were just making sure that our jails are being ran right, and we created these sweeps, you know, and we planned ahead a long time ago that when this day came, this is what we were going to do. So it didn't have anything to do with targeting him. However, that's kind of hard to believe because, you know, it just sounds like something that ain't real, right? So, um... Diddy's jail cell was reportedly raided by feds with several privileged materials seized by the feds. Since September, Diddy has been detained in the special housing unit of the Metropolitan Detention Center in New York, in Brooklyn, after being indicted and charged with some serious charges, racketeering, sex trafficking, and transportation to engage in prostitution. These privileged materials, they were allegedly seized during the raids with some of them pertaining to Diddy's ongoing case and his conversations with his attorneys 
on strategies that they will use to fight these charges against him. These paperwork, according to his attorneys and him, have gone missing. So they're trying to sabotage him, is what they're saying. Unlike most inmates at the facility, you know, in the regular section, Diddy is kept in a special housing unit that's actually reserved for detainees who require special protection. Now, this is not about him banging on the door and saying, take me to PC, protective custody, I'm scared. This is about them, the facility, protecting themselves. You got to understand that Diddy is a man that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So if anything happens to him behind bars, they're going to be held liable. Right? So while this move now has likely shielded Diddy from some unwanted interaction with other inmates, it did not spare him from becoming the target of a surprise raid on his cell. So in other words, he ain't getting no special privileges He's still getting his cell raided like everybody else. You could imagine being Diddy, being the music mogul, being behind bars. You know you're going to have somebody that comes up to you. Yo, let me rap for you real quick. Yo, Diddy, you know I write songs, right? Yo, listen to this one song that I wrote. I think this will be a hit. I know you're going to get out of here. And when you get out of here, man, you go, you could put me on. I'll look out for you while you're in here so nobody messes with you. And when you get out of here, you know what I'm saying, you put me on. Or whatever the case may be. So him being put in a special housing unit has pretty much saved him from having to interact with these types of people with their long list of demands or their fantasies of what could happen if they actually got in touch with a person like Diddy. However, no special privileges when it comes to your cell being raided because this is jail. His legal team... And his lead attorney, Mark Agnafilio, they have made the revelation in a new filing, noting that the prosecution has somehow obtained these privileged informations that could only have been seized from his cell by the feds. Now, you got to understand this. It's not the jail that has these privileged client attorney paperwork strategies on how to fight this case. It is the prosecution that is in possession of these paperwork, according to Diddy's attorneys. And they're saying that the only way that the prosecution could have gotten this is if somebody went into his cell, took it, and handed it to them. The people who work in the jail, they are not the prosecution. These are two different professions. So obviously this would look, y'all see what this looks like, right? This pretty much looks like somebody is paying somebody to go raid Diddy cell and bring us all the info. Now you got to take you got to understand this. Prosecution versus defense in court. That's pretty much a battle that's going on right there. You got two teams that's fighting against each other. If you if you want to do it in sports, just think about the Lakers going up against the Miami Heats. And then the Lakers having a secret person who was able to get the Miami Heats playbook to them before the game. You see what I'm saying? So this is what this looks like. And then, of course, Diddy's attorneys are now making what is called emergency moves. The exact timing of the raid was unclear which is weird because in prison or jails, when they do raids, uh, they're usually filmed, they're usually documented, so on and so forth. But they're saying that the exact timing of the raids remains unclear. However, Diddy's attorney did reveal that some of the seized items includes Diddy's own handwritten legal notes to his legal team. And these notes reportedly contain details about defense witnesses and strategies for their trial. The trial is scheduled to begin May of 2025. So that's the latest update for Diddy right there. 
We'll hear what's going to happen. I said this yesterday on our other video that we put up about Diddy. This is just my personal take on this. He was fine right where he was at. The jail and the prosecution had no complaints. But his new bail hearing was set for this weekend. It was supposed to be Friday that's approaching. Today is Tuesday. So today is Tuesday the 19th. Then you have Wednesday the 20th, Thursday the 21st, Friday the 22nd. So it would have been November 22nd, Friday of 2024. He would have been up for bail. And I don't know if somebody is saying we have to do everything we can to keep him behind bars. Because I think that this judge that already granted him all these things, he gets to now appear in court with no shackles, no handcuffs, granted. He gets this emergency hearing, granted. I feel like this judge might grant him, oh, third hearing for appeal, granted. I feel like this judge might grant him bail. So we have to come up with something that makes it look like he's not supposed to get bail. Because he is behind bars, reaching out to people he's not supposed to be reaching out to, etc., etc., etc. The attorney also argued that the raid not only violated Diddy's Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendment rights, but they also constituted a clear case of outrageous government conduct amounting to a substantive due process violation. Hmm. And this is a couple of days before his bail hearing. Y'all stay tuned. Let's see how it goes at his bail hearing. Do you think that Diddy is going to be let out on bail? Or do you think that this turn of events might be used against him for them to say, you know what? We're going to keep you behind bars. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one, and I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out. Peace.